The odds of finding a suitable donor are one in a hundred thousand. For everyone, that is. For everyone, it's one in a hundred thousand. And if there are only 1,400 black donors, what are the odds? No. What are the odds <clears throat> of actually finding a donor? That is frustrating. That is frustrating. That was shocking. I was scared. I was, I was angry. A friend of mine once said that the road to hell is paved with good intentions. So I think the small things you do can make a great difference. And the test thing and going to um, be a donor and so forth, that's a very, very small thing. Because at the end of the day, we are all, we're all brothers and sisters, you know? started back in 1997 when my son was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia and needed to find a matching donor in order to have a transplant. And at that point the registry was really very small in South Africa. There were only about 600 donors and it was impossible to find a matching donor for him. Ideally, if you have an identical twin, you would have your perfect donor match because you're looking for somebody that's inherited the same tissue types um, from both mom and dad, and that would be one of your siblings. Outside of that, you look on a general database, and there you're looking at odds of about one in 100,000. For majority of South Africans, the thought of becoming a bone marrow stem cell donor is particularly scary. For the thousands of South Africans that are diagnosed each year with life-threatening blood disorders such as leukemia, a bone marrow transplant is their only hope of survival. This is a daunting and traumatic task, with the chance of finding a matching donor being one in 100,000. The truth of the matter is that the process of donating bone marrow stem cells is a minor procedure, virtually identical to that of donating blood. Blood is drawn and travels through a machine which separates your stem cells from your blood. Your blood is then returned to your body. You would typically give about 150 mils of stem cells and your body will regenerate this in a matter of days. You're even able to drive yourself to the clinic and home that same day. Here are some important facts. A donor will typically donate about 2 or 3 percent of their reserve of stem cells. That 2 or 3 percent of stem cells can reconstitute an entire immune system. And that gift of a small percentage of your stem cells can save someone's life. The most common myth is that bone marrow is extracted from the donor. Incorrect. Bone marrow stem cells are a product of your blood. Only two teaspoons of blood are needed to register you as a donor. Donating bone marrow stem cells is no more painful than donating blood. The chance of finding a donor is one in 100,000. In Africa, the mixed ethnic groups makes it harder to find a donor. There is a desperate need for donors in all ethnic groups. The cost of using an international donor registry is unaffordable to most South Africans. You may be somebody's only chance of finding a donor. Here's a thought. We all die, but how many of us really, really live? For some inexplicable reason, it has always been my desire to save someone's life. Strangely, I never imagined that one day it would be my own life that was in need of saving. I found my life and my future now completely in the hands of voluntary donors and their life-saving gifts. I was first diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia in August 2006 after noticing that a bruise on my arm just refused to heal. I was checked into an isolation ward which would become my second home for a long time. I received my life-saving stem cell transplant at the beginning of 2007 my wife Lynn had to transport the little bag of stem cells to my hospital, so literally she held my life in her hands. After an epic fight for survival, it was time to really start living. Our first family adventure was to Egypt to visit the pyramids, which had been my lifelong dream. 
Thereafter, we ventured to the Great Wall of China, the Colosseum in Rome, the Great Barrier Reef in Australia, and also to Christ the Redeemer statue in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. By the middle of 2010, I had the idea to climb Mount Kilimanjaro. It was a spiritual experience climbing the highest mountain in Africa and was an emotional experience reaching the summit with my climbing companions. I don't think there was a dry eye at the top. I summited Mount Kilimanjaro for the second time in July 2011, but this time with my 15-year-old son Jason. Another awesome experience. Together we climbed Mount Aconcagua in South America and Jason became the youngest South African to reach the summit. In June 2012 we climbed Mount Elbrus together, the highest peak in Europe and our next adventure is Mount Vincent in Antarctica, which is going to be our greatest adventure yet. My hope is to climb all of the seven summits, the highest in each continent, and inspire and bring hope to other cancer patients. These days, every morning I'm excited waking up with the knowledge that I've been given another day to live, to make every day count by living and living large. I truly owe my life to these selfless champions and now aspire to give back. My message is never to lose your dream. <laughs> I can definitely say, well, it takes a flipping miracle to get up this mountain. I appeal to people so badly to join a registry because you don't want to wait until somebody close to you is diagnosed because it's too late. Join a registry while you can, build a state asset so that if somebody close to you is diagnosed, you can find that match. You can save someone's life. You could could change someone's life. You could save my life. You know, 